Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following. A piece of wire, 100 centimeters long, is cut into two pieces. One piece is bent to form a square, and the other piece is bent to form a triangle. Determine how the wire should be cut so the total area enclosed is, in part A, a maximum, in part B, a minimum. Step one, draw a diagram. If you think about the piece of wire, it is 100 centimeters long. And you can cut this into two parts. The first part you can call x, and the second part you can call 100 minus x. Now you also want to be mindful that this piece of wire technically could be cut anywhere from nothing, which is 0 centimeters, to a maximum of 100 centimeters. And we'll come back to this when we compare the three different cases. Now, if you look at the first part of the wire, X, you're going to take that and bend it into a triangle. Now, because you want to optimize the total area, the triangle that we're thinking about is going to be equilateral. So X divided by 3 is going to be the length of each side. And again, if you look at the base, you can divide this into two equal parts, x divided by 6 and x divided by 6. When you focus on half of this triangle, it's going to be a right angle triangle. And again, the let statements you can write on your own. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the green triangle, c squared equals to a squared plus b squared, which means, in this case, x divided by 3, quantity squared, equals to h squared plus x divided by 6, quantity squared. To isolate for the height, first expand the left-hand side. x squared divided by 9 equal to h squared plus x squared divided by 36. You can keep h squared on the right, copy x squared divided by 9 on the left. When you bring x squared over 36 to the left, that's going to be minus x squared divided by 36. The common denominator for 9 and 36 is 36. So you have to multiply the first fraction by the missing common denominator. So h squared equals to 4x squared minus x squared is going to be 3x squared divided by 36. The opposite of squaring something is to find the square root. The negative case is going to be rejected. This means when you find height, h equals to root 3 times the square root of x squared is going to be x. And if you look at the denominator, the square root of 36 is going to be 6. Now, I'm going to put a box around this. I'm going to use this when we set up the area of a triangle. Half times base times height. In this case, the base, which is right here, is going to be x divided by 3. And the height, which we just calculated, you can take this, plug it back in. That's going to be root 3 times x divided by 6. So really, the area of a triangle is going to be root 3 times x squared divided by 36. Now, if you look at the other piece, 100 minus x. You've got to take this piece and bend it into a square. So again, a square, by definition, has four equal sides, which means 100 minus x divided by 4 is going to be the length of each side. To find the area of the square, you take 100 minus x divided by 4 quantity square. And we'll expand this in a moment. 
Now, let's divide this into two different columns. We'll save the second column to compare the answers. When you're optimizing this, there are two cases you're thinking about. What's the maximum? What's the minimum? And the maximum is actually the simple case because you bend the whole wire to the shape with the most symmetry, which we'll look at in a moment. Minimizing is a tougher part. So if you set this up, you want to minimize the total area, which is the area of the triangle, plus the area of the square. So again, if you go back, a, which is now a function of x, this equals to root 3 x squared divided by 36. Plus, if you look at the area of a square, that's going to be 100 minus x divided by 4 quantity squared. Now, before we differentiate this, set it to 0, solve for x, you can expand this, which will help you do the rest of this a little bit faster. In the first part, I'm just going to copy. I want to expand 100 minus x quantity square. 100 times 100 is going to be 10,000 minus 2 times 100 times x minus 200x plus x squared all over 4 squared, which is 16. If you break this a little bit more, this would give you 10,000 divided by 16. Now, I could reduce this, but you don't really need to because when you differentiate this in a moment, the derivative of a constant is going to become 0. Now, if you look at negative 200x divided by 16, you can divide the top and the bottom by 4. So it's going to be 50 over 4, or you can even divide this by 2. Or I should say divide the, the top and the bottom by 8. That's going to be 25 divided by 2 x plus x squared divided by 16. Now we can find the derivative. We can set this to 0 and solve for x. In the first part, when you take the derivative of x squared, that's going to be 2x. And the 2 divided by the 36 at the bottom is going to give you 1 over 18. Second part, when you differentiate a constant, that would become 0. The third term, 25 divided by 2 times x, that's going to be 25 divided by 2. And last but not least, when you differentiate x squared, that's 2x divided by 16, which is x divided by 8. Now, when you set this to 0 and you want to solve for x, there's a common factor of x. And in the brackets, it's going to be root 3 over 18 plus 1 over 8 minus 25 divided by 2. Bring negative 25 divided by 2 on the left. You can copy the right. And again, the opposite of multiplying is a divide. Now, you can take your calculators, work it out. X is approximately 57 centimeters, which is the part you're going to use to form the triangle. 100 minus x is approximately 43 centimeters, which is the part you're going to use to form the square. Now, in order to find out if that's really the maximum or the minimum, you have to compare the three different cases. If you go back to the beginning, we mentioned that x could be anywhere from 0 up to 100 centimeters inclusive. And those are the two endpoints that you've got to think about as you're comparing those cases. So your goal is to plug these numbers back to the area function. The largest number is going to be the maximum. The smallest number is going to be the minimum. And again, from here, x is going to be 57, which is the critical point. Now. You can take the calculator, of course, plug these numbers back into 
a of x. In the first case, if x is going to be 0, which means you're going to bend the entire wire into a square, that's going to give you 625 centimeters square. In the second case, when you plug in 57, it's going to give you approximately 272 centimeter square. Last but not least, if you take the entire wire, x, which is 100, and you plug it back in, it's going to be approximately 481 centimeters square. So if you compare these three y values, the largest number, 625, is the maximum. The smallest number, 272, is the minimum. And it's not enough just to solve this. You really want to understand why this makes sense. So again, in part A, they're asking you to find the maximum. And in part B, they're asking you to find the minimum. And when you summarize this in a box, the maximum occurs when x equals to 0 centimeters, 100 minus x equals to 100 centimeters. And again, this is to bend into a triangle and a square respectively. Now, the reason why this makes sense is because if you compare the shapes of an equilateral triangle with a square, you should notice that a square has more symmetry. And because it's more symmetry, that's going to give you the maximum area. Part B, to find the minimum x is approximately 57 centimeters, which is used for the triangle. 100 minus x is approximately 43 centimeters for the square. I hope this makes sense.